today we are going to work on the end games, but before, a couple of exercises for you to warm up. So in this position that you see on the screen, why to start? And you have to find the winning variation. First of all, you will need to write down the main move. And then two variations after this move. So I will give you the hint. Uh, you see the rook on the C file. You see the queen and the knight. You need to find the, uh, the way how you can cooperate your pieces together, how you can create uh, the idea uh, of threatening the black's king using these pieces. Also bishop on f4. You, you will need to open C file. So this is the main hint. I will give you the hint. So the first move is b4. We are trying to open up the space. Open c file. Is it easier now? Once knight takes on b4, the geometry of the queen and of the king on the same diagonal and geometry of the rooks on the same file and the bishop on the way. Do you see? So knight takes on b4. I mean, well, I just I mean, your move, wha what can you offer here in this position after knight takes on b4? I keep thinking about the d6 square. Knight d6, <coughs> that's a good assumption. Knight b4, knight d6 check. Why could we, we make uh, this check? What helps us? Look at the geometry again. So the queen on a4, the king on e8, the rook on c1, the rook on c8. We want to get rid of the bishop on c5. So if the bishop takes on d6, John, what will be the next move? The bishop takes d6. Rook takes eight, correct. So instead of this move, black plays king to e7. Of course, king can move to f8. First, let us calculate king moves to e7. Jonathan? <coughs> Why to play? The rook is hanging on c8. Just take the rook. Don't hesitate. We want to get that exchange. That is, that is why we <coughs> sacrificed the pawn on b4, to get the exchange. If the king moves to f8, what are we going to do? Is it good? Like this, John, short, com short combination in two moves. We take the uh, c7. Go ahead, the black's move. And knight takes eight, very good. So returning back to b4, the other move that we are going to calculate is bishop x b4. The situation is a little bit different because if you play knight to d6 check, we have one more piece on the way, I mean, uh, on the c file, on the way of the rook. So if you play knight d6 check, bishop x d6, and we do not get anything from sacrificing that many pieces. But instead, here is another hint that you have. Jonathan, what's your move? Knight to c7 or rook takes c6. I think that both lines work here. So let's go with knight c7. Take, bishop takes, If queen takes, you take with the rook. What is the next move? C8. Rook c8. Let's see. Maybe black has some defense if you play knight c7. <coughs> I don't really see anything strong here. Do you guys see? Besides rook xc7, what else? 
if king steps away, then the knight on c6 is hanging, right? So the only move is rook x c7, then bishop x c7, then again. If black doesn't take on c7, then just the knight is hanging, or you return back with the bishop, right? So the only move and take. Uh, so in the game, this position, another solution was rook takes c6 here and queen b4. I think both lines are possible here. Okay, we are done with this position and we are going back, well, not going back, but starting with end games. So as I promised today, our goal is to work on the end games. This position is called Retty position. Have you heard about Richard Retty? Uh, so he was a very strong grandmaster who was born um, at the end of the 19th century and lived the majority of his life in the 20th century. So this is the end game and the idea created by Richard Retty. What is our goal here? By the way, why to play? You see the pawn on h5. The pawn is going to become a queen really soon. So black's king is in the square of the c6 pawn. Am I right? What about the white's king? Is he in the square of h5 pawn? No. However, there is a possibility, using the red's idea, how we can make the draw with white. Uh, maybe <coughs> somebody uh, has seen this idea before. So this will be a refreshment, but I think it's really useful. So why to play? Find the idea how to make the draw. So try to catch both pawns. So your idea is to help your own pawn and to catch the opponent's pawn. And also another hint, if you cannot catch your opponent's pawn, it means that you are close to your own pawn and you look at your pawn, your pawn is on c6. So if your king was closer to the pawn, it would be obvious that the pawn is, is going uh, to become a queen. So this means if you cannot catch your opponent's pawn, you can help your own pawn to become a queen. I will tell you the first move, king g7. Of course, not king h7, because the pawn will just move to h5, uh, from h5 to h4, excuse me. And just, you will never stop it. What do you think, what will be the next move? John? Um, there are two variations, right? King b6 and? King uh, h4. I'm sorry, h5. And h4. So let's start with king b6. Jimmy, what is the next move? What do you think? How can we approach to the pawn? I think king, uh, king f6. Very good. That's right. King f6. If I take on c6, Matt, what will be uh, the next White move. If king from b6 takes on c6. Uh, king to g5, very good. If I move to h4, you have to find another important move. But it's, it's easy now. Again, approaching to c6 pawn and trying to get into the square of h4 pawn. How can you do that? King f5. Exactly. If I play h3, Jimmy? King f4. No, if I play, I mean here, king f4, but I, I will play h2, and you already cannot help your oh, own right, pawn, right, and then the. So be king, d king d6. King d6, h2. Jonathan? H1. 
queen and we promote c pawn. So instead of king to b6, another move is h4. Well, basically we do not change anything, we just follow the same route. So we play king to f6. Again, if he plays h3, <coughs> we are playing king e6 or king e7 and help the pawn to promote. If our opponent plays king to b6, again, let us repeat the move, Matt. White to play. No, 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 king g5 is losing because of h3. Everybody should be focused. King? E5. King to e5, exactly. So king to e5 and you can uh, either approach to the c6 pawn or catch the h4 pawn. So once you got this idea, we are going to another end game uh, using the same idea you are going to um, to make a drop basically in this end game because from the first um, from the first view what do you think what the result what result is obvious here black that black wins but using Reddy's idea you can make draw so I give you I think three or four minutes to write down the lines <coughs> if you are ready uh, faster then just tell me and I will check your solution. The same idea exactly, but just in different uh, position, but the same idea. I think everybody can uh, guess the first move, right? King g6. So after king g6, you should write down the line for me. The next bl black move is clear too, am I right? John? Yeah, uh, king to b6. King to b6. So, starting with this position, write me a couple of moves. So you have some time, try to write all the variations that you can find here. You guys have to write down the variation after f5. So not ki uh, king takes c6, but f5 or h5. They both are the same idea. So we are at the following position. So king takes f f5 here this is what i want you to write uh, you you all wrote king takes c6 if king took on c6 then you would have taken on f6 and the pawn on h6 will will never promote so f5 this is what you have to figure out what you're going to do So it's understandable that we need to approach with the king to the pawns, right? So king f6. If king takes on c6, John, tell me the next move. If king takes on c6, uh, then king takes uh, f5. King takes f5, and again the king is in the square of the pawn h6. If I move to f4, Jimmy. What will be your next move? Uh, king to e5. King to e5, right. If I take on c6, Matt. Uh, king f4, right. Yeah. If I move to f3, king. Can you stop f3? No. no, impossible. So Matt, uh, what will be your next move? You meant d6, right? D6. King to d6, f2, c7, queen, 
queen. Uh, of course, black has the pawn on h6, and, but it will be really, really hard to promote this pawn and to uh, defend from the checks. Okay, did you get the idea of ready? Trying to catch two rabbits, right? We are going to work on the rook end game. Have you heard about such thing as umbrella? in the rook end games no when your king is under attack under checks in the rook end game what can we do are there any possibilities how we can escape so number one we can approach to the rook and try to stop the checks just imagine that the rook is given the checks on the open files and you cannot block it at all so you you have the possibility to approach what else This is, this is exactly what we're going to review. So, umbrella is when the king is hiding behind the opponent's pawn. So, can you guess the next move? Can you hide behind G3? Behind this pawn? No trailer, right? So uh, let us go with this variation first. If we give the check from B2, for example, Jimmy plays with black and John plays with white. So John, this is your move. You go here, right? Uh, and now, if I want to approach the king to come closer and go to f3. Jimmy, what will be your next move? Be attentive. You have much, much better move here. Rook, rook takes a five, right? So this move. Returning back. So we understood that this is the goal. Rook b2 and king of three. This is what will bring us success by playing with black. So in order to create a kind of umbrella from the checks, what do we need to do here, Matt? So the question is in f5 pawn. This is a very useful trick, especially when your pawn is already on e3 and you want to get rid of those annoying checks that will not let you promote your pawn to the queen. f4. You use your own pawn to trade it for the opponent's pawn. You know that uh, when we have extra material in the, in the rook end games, we have to be careful with trading. Because first of all, rook endgames is uh, considered to be the most complicated part of the endgames. There are so many different variations and you have to know the main Philidor's positions, how to win and to which position you're going to get. So they, they're really complex. And even strong grandmasters, they review endgames from time to time to refresh. So go ahead, Jonathan. Rook b2. If I move here, king f3. What's your goal? Checkmate. Or if I try to escape, what are you going to do? Easy. You're going to promote, but how? Um, just maybe like this. And <coughs> if you move to G2, this is, uh, let us see. Um, I think if I move to F1, then you will promote for sure, right? King F1, then Matt, what will be the variation if King moves to F1? I, I, I want Matt, Matt to say that. 
e2, king e1, and rook to g1, right? And then you're promoting the pawn. But instead, I will move here. So I will complicate your life. <laughs> E2, okay. Here. Okay, I see a goal. You want to play king of two, right? Okay, probably. Let me see. Maybe I can stop you here. So, after king of two, no way. So returning back, if I play some other move, if I give it a check, for example, king of two, and I move here. Here. Mm -hmm. And I have no defense again. Do you have any chance here if you play this line to stop you? I think it also brings success, but playing rook b1 check, king moves, this is just easier. Just you're promoting quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, instead of king g1, what if I play rook a1? How are you going to play? Here you will need the rook on the second rank. So Jonathan, your ideas will happen here, after rook a1. John, what is your next move? Uh, flex move, <coughs> okay. Mm-hmm, flex move. Rook to h2. Exactly. I have the only move. King to g1. Go ahead, how are we going to win? What is, what is our plus of this f4 pawn? That the rook cannot go to the h rank and check from the back side, right? Otherwise it will be really, h if we uh, do not have the pawn on f4, it will be really hard to defend from the checks from the back rank. So what is our next move? Let's continue. Rook to g2. Uh, but what is your idea after rook to g2? You're checking. If king moves to f f1, then you're winning with already familiar idea, e2, and then rook g1, right? So I have the only move to h1. <coughs> Let us see. So basically, it's like the idea is closer to what we had before. But I have one extra tempo here. What if I move here? Rook g8. OK. I think it's, again, it's unstoppable. I don't see any defense. Do you guys have any other ideas besides rook e1? So if we give check, then king moves here. And there is no chance for uh, giving up the rook like this, because we have the pawn on f5. So this doesn't work. So rook e3 doesn't work either. I think e2 works too. Rook g8 was in the game. Rook g8 and I, I think here it's, it's easily a winning, right? Like Jonathan, your variation before. So e2 and it's really hard to do something against e1. So what did we learn from this end game? Let us repeat. What did we learn? How can we protect against those annoying checks when we have this passing pawn on the third rank? Jonathan. The umbrella. The umbrella. Right. How do we create the umbrella? 
you stack the material, oh, basically this is, we, we sacrifice for some time. We can, all the time we can return a pawn back. That we sacrifice it and we block um, the file from the checks. Okay, good job. Now we are going to Lasker's idea. Have you, have you met this end game before? No? Okay, so um, <coughs> Lasker created this idea in order to help, like in this position, to help white to win the game. So you see that from first opinion, it's close to draw. And if black to was to play here, most likely the draw will happen. So the king will move to a7, and then um, white king moves to d8, then you give the check from d2, and then return back to c2 controlling this uh, line, or bring the king to b7, but why to play? So I will give you the hint. Another name of this is elevator. What is the first move? What do you think? I showed you a very good hint. So if black was to play here, <coughs> then he would have played king to a7, controlling b8 and b7. So the first move that we're going to make... If you play rook to h6, you just help me. Thanks a lot, king a7. Oh, okay. Well, you don't want <laughs> Of course, we do not want king to a7. What is the first move? Jimmy, if we do not want king to a7, how we can prevent it? The king to, be, king to b8, right. So after you move the king to b8, now what is your threat? Matt? c8 is your threat. You're going to promote. The only opportunity how I can defend is to give you check back. Uh, right? Yeah. Are you going back to c8? Uh, You're going to a8, of course. And again, you threaten what? c8 mm -hmm. queen to promote. So I'm forced to return back to c2. Keep in mind, elevator. So you're going up, up, up. Jonathan. Rook H6. Rook H6. Jimmy? Uh, King B7. Matt? Black to play. What do you think? What will be the next move? The only move. Rook, rook B2. King A7, right? I return back to C2. John? Rook to h5, check. King here. Jimmy? Uh, king b6. No, king b7. Because if you move the king to b6, you do not, you do not have any threat. You are not going to promote the pawn to c8, you're just protecting the pawn. But after moving to b7, again you threaten c8 queen. Jonathan? Elevator, king, if you play king c6, again you're helping me, rook c2 check, try to use the king, the opponent's king, as an umbrella, like in the previous example you used the pawn. Well, if after king <coughs> to c6 and then rook to c2 check, mm -hmm. uh, king to, oh wait a minute, I forgot that pawn there, never mind. Don't forget about h2 pawn. You cannot create the bridge here. Where are you thinking about the bridge? King c6 and rook c5? Yeah. So the pawn in h2 also wants to become a queen. So don't forget about that. King a6, right? I return back to c2. So Matt, your next move. Elevator, we go up. H4. 
Jan? King to b6, and here, what is your threat? Jonathan? Take on h2. Take on h2. Give you check back. Matt? King where? Uh, a5. King to a5. I have to return back. Jimmy? The rook check. Rook h3 checks. Rook h3 checks. King knows here. Chan. And finally, we got to the position where rook takes h2. Rook takes h2. That was our goal. How did you like it? Was it good? Yeah, the elevator. Wasn't good for black, but that was great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that a win though, for sure? Uh, well, you will you'll have to work on that. <laughs> we can we can play that if you want. That's a good idea. Um, so to no, this no. you can try to make the draw, but it's really really hard, really hard. Okay, let's play. That was a good idea. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's play. Okay, thank you very much for the attention today. <coughs> I hope we had much fun and you learned new ideas. We learned red ideas. We learned Lasker ideas. Uh, we warmed up with good puzzles. We worked a little bit on uh, the r queen against the rook endgame. So <coughs> now you will have some work to do at home. Mm -hmm.